Yes, hello, good day. How are you today? I come to you with a, a pleading message today. Pleading. For Christ is pleading and calling and drawing all men to him. As he used men back then, he uses men today. Both the divine and human come together in cooperation. They work in partnership. Right? And I did this because I am pretty disturbed with what is going on in my country with what is going on in the world at large. But I also have the answer for you. And the answer is in God's word. The answer is the testimony of Jesus Christ. And this is what we all need today. We need it, brethren. As I entitled this, Wake Up Trinidad and Tobago and the whole world at large. Jesus is coming in our generation. He is coming. So let's jump right into it. Righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Right? Proverbs 14 34. Righteousness, which is right doing, exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach or a disappointment to any people. So you want, you want to know one of the reasons why the country is in a mess? Because the country, in fact, a country is made up of people. And it's people who are committing these crimes. It's people who are sinning daily. And God is trying to get our attention. Many are just given... Uh, you know, it's like a is is like a um, a doctor. He prescribed pills to alleviate some pain or some disease, but the pills deals with the symptom. It doesn't heal or or, or 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 gives the cure. It is not that. As John the Baptist say, lay the axe at the root of the tree, and the axe will be laid at the root of the tree today, brethren. Because we have to get it right in the name of Jesus. Because he is coming. And he is coming for a perfect people. So. Sin is a disappointment to any people. The country is full of sin. Brethren. And let's evaluate God's Ten Commandments. It says here, my tongue shall speak of thy word. For all thy commandments are righteous. That's Psalms 119, 172. So let's review the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. This is the standard of righteousness, brethren. And every nation on earth is governed by it. Have you ever wondered why the laws of the land don't kill, don't, ski, don't steal? If you do that, what's going to happen? The police is going to lock you up. And if when they try you, you are guilty, you're going to prison. Have you wondered where this, those laws came from? It came from heaven. And all men are governed by it and it's going to be the standard by which all man is judged in the judgment day. All. Right? 
So when you look at the country, thou shalt not have no other gods before. You understand? Many of us are putting things in front of God. For God is a jealous God. And he don't take those things like. So if we claim to be Christian. If you claim to love God. No matter who you are. We will want to put God first. And everything shall be added after. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it says here. Thou shalt not have. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. There are many in our country are worshipping idols. Now is your choice. You understand? But that hedonism, it's hedon practices, it's paganism, and God abhors it. He's calling you back to the true and living God. These idols, they can't hear, they can't see, they can't speak. But we bow down to them and we, and we pray and we serve them. What can they do for you? They can't do anything. But if we call on the name of the, the, name of the Lord, He's going to hear us. He's going to answer us in time of need. It says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Are we calling ourselves Christians today? And living contrary. Bedrin God is calling us back. To the true image of unlikeness of God. Remember what happened in the Garden of Eden? Man was made in the image and likeness of God. That's God's character. That was imprinted, inscribed on man's heart. So everything that Adam and Eve did prior to the fall. They were living in accordance with God's character. Right? That's what's like his duplicate. And it says, honor thy father and thy mother. What are we seeing today? Children are disobedient brethren. And it was prophesied. Lovers of them own selves, disobedient to parents, covetous boasters, despisers of those that are good, incontinent, without natural affection, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What the Bible say from such turn away. These children are totally rebellious today. I've never seen it before. And yes, when we were young, we were, we were rebellious. But this is another form of rebellion. And this was a clear sign. Before God destroyed the antediluvians, the people, by a flood. In the time of Noah. These are the kind of things that was taking place. And God was displeased, brethren. Thou shalt not kill. The land is groaning. Because man is shedding blood like that. You're wondering if it's some samurai movie we're watching. Man have no regard for life right now. There's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. And because of that, the land is groaning. And is ascending to heaven. Thou shall not commit adultery. Married people, stay in your own home. Stop looking at the neighbor wife or the girl on the street. That goes for me too. It is not good in the sight of the Lord. If you have one wife, stay with the one wife. If it didn't work out, well, fine. But, but by God's grace, Hold, hold on to him. Marriages are breaking up today. For many reasons. But God expects us. If we are married. Stay with one wife. One husband. 
Don't go, don't go contrary to that. Thou shall not steal. Man have no regard for the thing, for, for, for your neighbor's thing. No more. Some people are just, their hands are itchy. If you rest down some by them, it's gone. You understand? Thou shall not steal. And while when you're stealing, it's probably escaping the man a man's eye. And man in see, but God seeing, he's watching you. You could steal in the darkest night, he's seeing you. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. If you call yourself a Christian, let it influence show. By their fruits you shall know them. You understand? I had to learn this the hard way. But as I see the light of this text, this nine commandment, I purpose in my heart by the grace of God that I wouldn't call myself a Christian and live contrary to the Bible. It is doing damage to society and it had to stop. Thou shalt not covet whatever belongs to your neighbor. Keep your eyes straight. I had to keep my eyes straight too. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's thy neighbor's possession. I beg of you, I beseech you, if we keep these commandments by faith, only by faith in Jesus, His strength, His blood, power in the blood, we will do well, brethren. But the land is messed up today. The nations are messed up today for breaking these commandments. I am here to lift it up, brethren. It had to lift, be lift, lifted up higher. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach, a disappointment to all people. Sin is the transgression of the law. If it didn't have no knowledge of sin, there would be no law. But there is a law. His Ten Commandments. And we are governed by it. And we are going to be judged by it. Don't get me wrong, we are saved by grace, true faith, in Christ Jesus, not of works, lest any man boast. But he has a law. If it had no law, there would be no need for grace. We got grace because men broke the law. Adam broke the law, so God had to send his son to die, give us grace to cover our sins. But now we could go boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Let's go on. Genesis 6 and Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. I am trying to show a parallel today. This is exactly what Christ said would happen. And I'm trying to prove it to you that we are seeing it as clear as day to day. It says, and the Lord said, verse 3 of, of, of Genesis 6, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Right, brethren? So he said his spirit shall not always strive with men. Why did he say that? Prior to this text, you will see that there were unlawful marriages taking place between Godly people and ungodly people. There, there were always there were two groups of people back then, the sons of God and the daughters of men, or the or the, or the people of the flesh, the sons of God. Right? They joined together. God hated that. Right after he said, "My spirit shall not always strive with all men," but later on in the text he clarifies what was going on in the land at that time. It was before the flood, right? And God is merciful to show that he is merciful. When Moses asked for God's glory to pass by before him, Exodus 34, 6 and 7 says, 
and the Lord God merciful and gracious abounding in goodness and truth keeping mercies for thousands forgiving iniquity transgression and sin and by no means spare the guilty visiting the children visiting iniquity upon the children or the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation right so our generation is 40 years he said the third and the fourth so he gives nations up to three and four generations to repent and turn to him so is this not consistent is was this not a prophecy of God's character 120 years is three generations unto the third and the fourth generation so he gave the antediluvians around Noah's time three generations to repent and they did not as we know the, 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 the record recorded that eight entered the ark and every man jack animal everything perished it says and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made man verse 11 says the earth also was corrupt right before God and the earth was filled with violence are we not seeing that today what's the meaning of corrupt corrupted debased filitate vitiated bribe, bribery right dishonesty poachable depraved perverse perverted reprobate dirty sordid immoral that's how the land was back then and this is how it is today and it didn't reach its climax yet you know and this is what's happening and god looked upon the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth and god said unto noah the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold i will destroy them with the earth so that was a command god gave to noah and he executed it on time and i'm here to tell you god is always on time it's gone the antediluvians genesis 6 continues before the flood after noah entered the ark god shut him in and shut the ungodly out but for seven days the people knowing not that their doom was fixed continued their careless pleasure loving life and mocked the warnings of impending judgment so says the savior shall also the coming of the son of man be silently unnoticed as the midnight thief will come the decisive hour which marks the fixing of every man's destiny the final withdrawal of mercies offered to guilty men in noah's day men had disregarded the law of god that is happening today until almost all remembrance of the creator had passed away from the earth man had no regard for the law of god and the things of god their iniquity reached so great a height that the lord brought a flood of waters upon the earth and swept away its wicked inhabitants from age to age the lord has made known the manner of his working when a crisis has come he has revealed himself and has interposed to hinder the working out of satan's plans with nations with families and with individuals he has often permitted matters to come to a crisis that his interference might become marked then he has made manifest that there is a god in israel in zion who will maintain his law and vindicate his people as we go on now this part that i'm switching to now 
is very crucial. And while I go through it, you may scoff at it. But I'm here to tell you it plays a part in why this whole world is corrupted. It plays a major part. And why the antediluvians, the people before the flood, was corrupted like that. So let's go on. The question is, do how you and I eat can cause us to break God's commandment? Let's look at this. And said, if thou will diligently hearken, this is Exodus 15, 26. This is God saying this uh, through Moses. Telling Moses this. If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. So let's let's evaluate this now. He says, And will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. The commandments is the Ten Commandments that I just read for you. The statutes is his his um health laws. The children of Israel was governed by it, and we too are governed by it. Man thing today they could eat anything and get away with it. But even nature testifies and protests against itself. For when you eat foolishness, it 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 it, it um your body protests. And they get disease. So even nature cries out. Right? So it says, If you keep the Ten Commandments and the statutes, which is the health laws, you're going to do well. You're going to be saved by many diseases that is pervading around us. So the health laws and the Ten Commandments, natural law and moral law, comes together. He said, for I am the Lord that he led thee. So let me, let, let's, let's make a comparison now. History records about what take, took place in the time of the people of the flood. It says, since the first surrender to appetite, mankind have been growing more and more self-indulgent. Right? You're wondering why it's saying first this since the first surrender to appetite, Adam and Eve fell to appetite. That was the main sin. You understand? So the this text that I sh that, that I shared, it confirms that breaking nature's law, natural laws, it break you break the Ten Commandments. For what? For what the, the, the seven commandments said. The sixth says, Thou shall not kill. You know, the Bible says, Your body is the temple of God. And it also says, um, Somewhere else, If you destroy this temple, Him will I destroy. So we, we, we not looking just at, uh, you picking up some man, killing your neighbor here alone. If our bodies is the temple and we had to glorify God, whatever we do with it, whatever we eat, we drink, we had to glorify God. So whatever we eat, whatever we drink, and whatsoever we do, it could affect how we live and it could affect our bodies. And God can't, would not be able to communicate with us effectively for he comes in communicates with us through the frontal lobe of our mind. That's that's the passageway in which he he gets our attention. Right? So it says here, since the first surrender to appetite, mankind have been growing more and more self-indulgent until health has been sacrificed on the altar of appetite. The inhabitants of the antediluvians world were intemperate in eating and drinking. They would have flesh meats, although God ha had at that time given man no permission to eat animal food. 
right? Proof of this? Look at Genesis 1, 29 to 30. 2, 7 to 10. 6, 19 to 21. And 9, 3 to 4. It will clarify this. God gave a particular diet. He gave fruits, nuts, and grains at first. He didn't give man flesh. When man sinned, then he added vegetables and ground provisions. But this is what he gave. Man came from the dust of the ground. So what better things to give your body than the stuff that comes from the ground? He didn't give flesh. He only gave flesh to eat at the time of the flood. After the flood, everything was washed away. No vegetation to eat. So that's why he gave the clean and the unclean meat. He gave the clean to eat. He said, discard the unclean. It is not fit for food. You will get that in Leviticus 11. Right? Notice also from Genesis 11. Man's lifespan dropped from 900 plus years to 600. Notice that. Why? Because of meat eating. When sin entered, God had to put a probationary period on this earth. You understand? For man will have continued living for a long period of time. Right? Then, one something years, by the time of David, God gave man 70 years to live. Three score and ten. Some live over that today, as we know, and some up to that age, and some much less. They ate and drank till the indulgence of their depraved appetite knew no bounds, and they become so corrupt that God could bear with them no longer. Their cup of iniquity was full, and he cleansed the earth of, of its moral pollution by a flood. So I'm here to tell you how you eat is how you're going to react. What you eat is going to be a part of you. All right? So the life of the flesh is in the blood. You become what you eat. So I just have two comparisons or two examples for you. And it's proof. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So when we eat the blood of an animal, we inevitably take in that animal nature. Let me show you. The chicken. A January 2013 feature story in a scientific American called The Startling Intelligence of the Common Chicken opens by exp explaining that the chicken can be deceptive and cunning that it possesses communication skills on par with those of some primates, and that it uses sophisticated signals to convey its intentions. This is how a chicken reacts. The characteristics. It, a form of communication observed in many primates, and some birds, such as ravens and chickadees, right? One example of this kind of communication is how males entice females with food as a form of courtship. So I'm asking you, while I read this, make the comparison. Make the comparison that when we eat this, we eat the chicken with the blood in it. Because that's what you're getting in these fast food restaurants. You become like the chicken. So a man and a woman operating just like the chicken today. Right? Deceptive and cunning. Right? It says... Uh, entice females with food as a form of courtship. Right? A guy pick you up on his shit. Hey, let me go for some teeth now. That does not immediately lead to mating. After a period of time, he wants something. This means that females not only take their time to eavesdrop and evaluate the male's behavior, but they also must form an opinion about various males and their reputations for providing food, and then commit these various experiences to memory 
only then does the female express a mating preference. Right? But of course, that might be all that bad. A woman will check out the seed. You know? In order to make a life partner, right? But now, I take you out. Psst, honey, come, come through. You look sexy. I take you out. Boom. You have sex with the man. So when you dress a certain way and you dress revealing, you attract flies. And the flies have sex with you. You get diseased or contaminated. And he chose your way. He goes for another contaminated flesh that is out there. So he chose you aside. It says another example Smith offers is how more submissive males in a clock in a clock, in a flock, use clever and deceptive strategies to court females while diverting attention away from the dominant male who would otherwise derail their plans. The objective is to outsmart the dominant male by attracting a potential mate away from him without him getting wise to the submissive male's intentions. And this strategy offers sucks. Um, often succeeds. So I talk about the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. This could very well play a part in man committing adultery because of way eating. Life of the flesh is in the blood, and the woman they are attracted to married men is not your husband, is not your wife. Leave them alone. That's wrong. The cow, the cow dis descriptors, descriptors of a cow behavior. A wide variety of terms can be used to describe cow behavior, such as the t 20 used by Welfare Quality, right, 2009, in their welfare assessment protocols. These are listed below in decreasing order of positive emotional state. Happy, content, positively occupied, friendly, relaxed, calm, active, sociable, playful, lively, inquisitive, uneasy, bored, indifferent, fearful, apathetic, frustrated, agitated, distressed, irritable. Right? When describing antagonistic behaviors, welfare quality use the following descriptors. When describing antagonistic behaviors, rebellious behavior. So this is how the, 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 the cow gets on. It boots, head button, which occurs with physical contact, where one animal is button, hitting, trusting, striking, or pushing the other animal with four heads, horns, or horn base with a forceful movement. The receiver does not give up its present position. How women and men getting on today is because of the flesh you're eating, the blood in it. You're becoming like the cow. So you're botting anything. You're treating people anyhow. People come to buy some men a store, you strip it. You're ready to cast them off. I can't deal with that person. Is the most foolish behavior out. And please, please learn to ignore. Please don't be aggravated by someone who's getting on like that. Don't stoop to their level. Right? Live as Christ lived, peaceable with all men. Alright? Displacement which is physical contact where one animal is forcing the other animal to give up its position, chasing where one animal makes another animal move. Right? You see that in day-to-day -day living with people. Fighting, where two animals push their heads against each other while planting their feet on the ground with both exerting force against each other. Chasing up, chasing up, where one animal uses physical contact against a lion animal to make it rise. You understand? 
So people get an on like this bedroom. It is not no fairy tale or no foolishness I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to you. The life of the flesh is in the blood. It's better for us to go back to a plant-based diet that God gave in the beginning. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, greens. Right? The diet in itself doesn't have no power in itself. It helps a lot, but it doesn't have no power. It's like it's like your door in the night. When it when night time comes and you're ready to sleep, you bolt up your door, you lock it. But if a bandit were to come with a bulldozer with, with something and knock down that door and come in, are you safe? No, you're not. So my point is God said to go back to the plant based diet, get off the meat. And to even eat meat with, with, with blood in it, because you become like the animal, you get disease like it. There's no power in it, in the thing itself, but the power comes from God. So while you lock your door in the night, thinking that you're safe, or there's power in the, the bolts and the locks of the door, there's no power. A bandit to come and, 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 go, and, and, and push through that door. But by faith and believing, that God will protect you in the night. Likewise, by faith, you believe in that when you do follow these things that he says, his health principles, he's going to keep you from these diseases. You could hold him to those promises. Follow these health laws, brethren. This will play a part in, in, in alleviating the crime situation. Man is getting all like animals today. Okay. Let's go on. Pre-Lent festival. Greek mythology. Now I'm sharing this because carnival is coming up. And the funny thing is, why the country in a mess? People ignore it, and they go and jump up, and they expose themselves. Right? So we worship this same God Bacchus, which is the God of reveling and partying and drinking. And you see, he's naked. And this is how people are today in carnival. They're naked. They have no regards and no respect for their bodies. Their body is the temple, but it exposes for sale. Check this sick, twisted guy. Naked. I don't want to see you, brother. It says... Bacchus was the god of fertility and wine, later considered a patron of the arts. He, he created wine and spread the art of, of viticul um, viticulture. He had a dual nature. On one hand, he brought joy and divine ecstasy, or he would bring brutal and binding rage, thus reflecting the dual nature of wine. Right? Dionysus and his followers could not be bound by fetters. But get what it said. Bacchus was the god of fertility and wine. Fertility. Have you ever noticed why so much sex takes place on carnival? There is even, there is even a, a, a advertisement that on the radio going to work each day. And they're saying, strap up, use condoms. Don't have sex, you know. With all protection, what they should be saying, why that? Why that is commendable? Because it's people's choice to do what they want. But you're gonna face God in the judgment if you have if you're fornicate outside of marriage. You're gonna face God in the judgment, right? So let's confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us. But fertility, have you ever noticed why so much pregnancy after carnival? The country is laden with pregnant pregnant women. And most of it is because of the spur of the moment. You have sex and you get someone pregnant. You bring children in the world and you don't even know how to grow them up. Babies making babies. So you're worshipping this God here. And it's not really a God. It's devils in the form of God and you take and in the form of this God. 
and we worship these devils. And the influence of these demonic spirits enter these people and they react just as this guy reacted. So brethren, is more lawlessness and immorality will take place in Carnival. So the country seem or some seem to be crying out, but there is no revival, no reformation, no changing. And I am here to raise the standard higher, brethren. We need to. Alright. Carnival. Continued. God's last message recorded regarded with indifference. As the time of their probation was closing, the people of the flood, before the flood, the antediluvians gave themselves up to exciting amusements and festivities, so they had carnival too. Those who possessed influence and power were bent on keeping the minds of the people engrossed with mirth, that's merrymaking, and pleasure, lest any should be impressed by the last solemn warning. So Noah was preaching, warning people of, of, of the coming doom. Do we not see the same the same thing repeated in our day? While God's servants are given the message that the end of all things is at hand, the world is absorbed in amusements and pleasure seeking. There is a constant wrong of excitement that causes indifference to God and prevents the people from being impressed by the truths which alone can save them from the coming destruction. Have you noticed that on your way to work, nearly every location, there is a preacher calling us back to God? Jesus is coming and he loves us. Have you seen that all over Port of Spain, all over Kureb? All of us sour. For my children and people, you know what I'm referring to. These locations. And bedroom. This was happening in the time of Noah. Noah was preaching and men disregarded. They were indifferent to it. Man's heart failed them for fear. They grieved the Holy Spirit, bedroom. So take heed when you see these things. The rocks crying out. God is coming sooner than we think. These same things that happened back then is happening now. Take heed to these things, brethren. Take heed. Let's go on. The reality. The world's impenitence lies at the door of the church. It lies at the door of the church. So while all these foolishness going on in the world with crime and violence and bloodshed, there's indifference in in churches. Members fighting against each other. This church have this doctrine and the other one have this. Why not Babylon? And because of all this fighting, because of people feel they are bearing false witness today, they claim to be Christians, but they live in like the world. How can you and I be of influence to people outside there? We are the light of the world. But what happened? We are living like the world. The world have bust through our doors and sitting in our chairs. Are we not protesting? Bedrin, we need to wake up. The world's impenitence, the world's, their, 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 their heart is hard and unrepentant because we refuse to want them, because we refuse to shine that light in our life. The world is like this. It lies at the door of the church. It's our fault. Who are Christians is our fault. So I call on you, if you are a Christian, to raise the standard higher. God is calling you to do that. Don't be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to be a pretender. 
if we say we are Christians, that we live like it, by God's grace. If we, if, 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 if we are not, we are not. But each man on this earth have to make a decision in the judgment. They have to make a decision. Have to. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil. As Ecclesiastes 8.11 Today many marvel at the crime situation. They even go on to say these men are wicked. They are. And they deserve it. That may be so. The problem is while these crimes are happening, many hearts are getting harder. No repentant spirit. They grieve in the Holy Spirit. Nobody weeping between the porch and the altar. None. Nobody saying, hey, Father, there must be something going on. What shall we do? No one is using these things as an indicator to repent and to turn to the Most High. If one never accepts Jesus, do you think for one moment that that person is going to heaven? It's impossible. Even Christ himself said, Unless a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It's impossible. It's impossible. Right? It's impossible, Benjamin. The spirit of God persistently resisted is at last withdrawn from the sinner. This is why crimes are being committed. Men are grieving the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is there to convict. So while the Spirit is convicting someone, hey, what you are going to do there, brother, is wrong. Sister, that's wrong. They say, eh, eh I'm going to do it anyway. So persistently resisting the Holy Spirit is at last withdrawn. God's Spirit can't. He can't. Call out to, to that person again. The spirit leaves that person. And then there is left no power to control the evil passions of the soul. And no protection from the malice and enmity of Satan. So men possessed by demons taking the life of men, women and children today. And likewise women doing the same thing. So it's demons in the form of people carrying all these things. Because we are grieved God's spirit, Satan has total control of that individual. But please resist not, quench not the spirit. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on you, call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's Isaiah 55, 6 and 7. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. So if we persistently grieve the Holy Spirit, and they think you're okay, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doing, as Micah 3 4. So call on the Lord while he is near. Brethren, he's near. He's near. So this is the murders that taking place. Remember last year carnival, I believe it's last year or year before, this Chinese girl came down to play mass. And she died. There was no big protesting against this. Because in the spirit of carnival, you don't care about any money. It's all about pleasure loving and seeking. So someone could die. And we will be careless and indifferent. But if destruction was to come on this country at the time of carnival, trust me, all those who partake in it is going to perish. 
If you are Christian and they partake in it, you're going to perish. So man have no regard for man's life today. Look this one just recently on the right. Happened in the movie town. This girl showed to a slip. I'm just pointing out some things that happened in my country. Slip, sl siblings slain. Boys 9 and 15 kept bad company. The one on the right. Next murder take, took place. And this is a day-to-day -day thing, Benjamin. And crime increasing yearly. Daily and yearly. Man is grieving God's spirit. Look one, I think, happened in Chagonas. Where this person was on his bike. I think he was purchasing something. Or by an ATM. And this man pulled out on his car. And started bus shots. And then, jumped back in the car and the car sped off. Then they see here on the right a schoolboy on the side of the street. He, he, he's dead. You understand? Wake up, people. Jesus is coming. I'm here to tell you. When you read the book of Jonah, God sent Jonah to warn Nineveh of a coming destruction. For you see, the people of Nineveh, they were sinful exceedingly. That it went to heaven. Right? You, you see another description of that in Genesis 19 with Sodom and Gomorrah. Sins have reached unto heaven. And God sent a messenger to warn Nineveh of the coming doom. Well, guess what happened? Nineveh repented from the king on the throne to the little child in the family. Repented and turned to God and God no longer. He didn't destroy Nineveh again because they repented and turned from their wicked ways. So Trinidadians and the world at large, are you prepared to repent? Are you hearing the pleadings of God's Spirit tugging at your heart's door? It's an individual decision. And it's people killing people, not robots killing people. If we continue, destruction is going to come to Trinidad. You understand? And if God decides to delay any destruction that comes on this earth, well then we know the seven last plagues is going to be poured out. Revelation 15 and 16. And those who refuse to repent and turn to God is going to perish with these plagues. Virgin, I'm no longer, no longer is it it shouldn't be a sugar-coated message. I mean, I'm telling you the truth. Quick to say God is a trinity. But is he pleased with the foolishness that has taken place? God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. So he sent Jesus to die, to give us grace and pardon. But if we accept him, he's faithful and just. He will, he will cleanse us. He will transform our hearts. So Jesus is pleading, brethren. He pleading. Are you, are you going to insult him and say, you yeah, die for me in vain? Or are you going to accept him as your personal savior? I am just one voice. Please accept him today. Let's be real with ourselves. Till we meet again. I love you. And I hope to see you in the kingdom of heaven. Lessons to you.